Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we share the secret how to capture every possible email address for Black Friday. Joining me on the show is Adam Robinson, CEO of retention.com. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today, we want to dive deep into email marketing because Q4 is coming up, Black Friday is coming up, and we want to find out how you can cop- capture every possible email address that is out there for your business. Now, things have changed in the email marketing quite a bit since Apple did some big changes, and I think not everyone is aware of what kind of implication that has on collecting email addresses and doing email marketing. So with me on the show today, I have Adam Robinson. He's the founder and CEO of Retention.com. He has bootstrapped Retention.com to 20 million average uh, annual revenue in working is working in public and post daily on LinkedIn. That's where you'll find him and is making a docu-series called The Billion Dollar Challenge, chronicle his journey with retention.com. So let's welcome Adam to the show. Hi, Adam. How are you today? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Adam, iOS 14.5 and everything that followed really messed it up for marketing, specifically for email marketing. And we want to dive right into it. Give me an overview of what really happened. So... um this is how this is what has gone on from being someone who who sells into these e-commerce vendors but is not one myself um ios 14 happened which in my observation had took everyone's facebook and by the way we sell into shopify stores mainly so it's mainly a facebook ad exercise that people are doing to grow their businesses for the most part um CAC LTV or whatever, return on ad spend or whatever. In my observation, if you were to go before iOS 14 versus now, it's like gone up by 50%, right? The the, the cost to acquire a customer on average. I'm sure there's some cases in which uh, it's not that. Um, and interestingly, so iOS 14 prohibited, you know, the user had to opt into being tracked across websites. So a thing that it did, which was so punitive was it just made targeting harder because it made it harder for Facebook to put someone in a bucket of interest and build a profile and it made them hard, it harder to show them their targeting ad so they were just new every time um I think everybody gets that and the brands who kill it today in my opinion it's like true classic is this t-shirt company they're, they were founded under three years ago and they're doing 150 million run rate revenue. I think they kill it because they can serve a broad ad, if that makes sense. They're just showing t-shirt ads to men, period. And it's not like, you know, men who have a gluten intolerance, who have a whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, which is kind of like, uh, I just wanted to say that because I don't think all hope is lost. It's just this Facebook thing before iOS 14 had this incredible ability for a brand to create this hyper niche product and then just find those people who would buy it like, like very quickly. Right. So that was a big change there. And it's in meta. What I don't think people are aware of is that Apple's doing other stuff other than this iOS update. They have this thing called intelligent tracking prevention. And that has been ratcheting down on what are called third-party applications. So things like Meta, Klaviyo, Shopify, these third-party apps' ability to track users on their website. Let's talk about email because that's what we're talking about today. Why would it matter if... So what has happened is Klaviyo, for instance, who everybody knows just IPO and everybody uses, they used to be able to track someone on a merchant's website for two years. And if you go, they did it with a cookie. If you search Clavio's help docs and type Clavio cookie, the first thing that you will see is this warning banner that says, as of April 23rd of this year, due to intelligent tracking prevention, instead of two years, Clavio's tracking only lasts seven days. So... Why is that a problem? Well, the problem is if someone clicks on a Facebook ad, hits your website and browses around and puts something in their cart and leaves, they will get the best email that exists in the world today. They will get an abandoned cart email. 
that's amazing. <laughs> if eight days later, they come back on their own volition and they don't click through from an ad, you don't know who they are. <laughs> they can click around eight days later, they can click around, put a pair of shoes in the, in their cart and leave. And you can't send them that email a year ago. They could have come back nine months later and done that and gotten an abandoned cart email. Right? So if you have to start at zero every seven days, the amount of people that you actually have tracked and the ability to send these messages to relative to the amount of people that there would be if you could track for two years is smaller by two thirds. Approximately I've seen from the data because this is what we do. This is what we sell. So um, I just wanna raise awareness of this problem because I think most merchants know what iOS 14 was and that it hurt them and that it hurt them in meta. I don't think hardly anybody is aware of this intelligent tracking prevention and its effect on you in your email program, right? So it's a problem. You need to fix it. You know, check out redemption.com. This is what we do. We track people. We help. We have four different ways of identifying people. And we identify people on your website, help you track them for longer. And uh, it just makes, you know, the, the the biggest thing it does with respect to this Apple thing is it makes all of these flows that you set up, which mm -hmm. Clavio makes you set up an abandoned checkout flow, but I would recommend setting up an abandoned add to cart flow, an abandoned browse flow, and a welcome series. These automated, part of the magic, most of the magic is Clavio is of Clavio is the ease with which you can set up these messages to go out over email and SMS from people taking action on your website because those are timely, they're contextual, they're relevant, they resonate, right? Like the, they, they are the magic email. Um, so, so yeah, there's another way to use this technology, which going into black Friday is, I think it's, it's, it's just like a hack. There's no other way to describe it. So no, our, our original product, um, if a visitor hits your homepage and they leave without filling out a form, we can resolve that to a deliverable email address only for USA traffic. Um, and we can just put it in your email list and we can grow your list that way. Everybody's like, how is that legal? How does it work? And what do I send? And, you know, aren't these emails just going to be junk or whatever? We are incredibly judicious about cleaning them and we know how to make them deliver well so like that's number four with the legality part in the usa only um if you have an opt-out link in the email it you're not actually legally re legally required to get an opt-in so this is not europe in europe you are required opt-in for data collection on the internet it's not canada um opt-in for data collection in email uh it's only usa technology um and then number three how does it work we have a publisher network who do banner ads and we basically have the ability to take anonymous digital identifiers in the ad tech world and connect them to profiles which include emails of people that have opted in to receive emails from the publisher network that's ten thousand feet how it works um and it's incredible. Dr. Squatch, for instance, which I'm, I think people have heard of this big soap company. They were doing a lot of ads. They got acquired. Um, they onboarded this 90 days before Black Friday last year. We were responsible for over a million dollars of incremental revenue in October alone. And we were 5% of their revenue from the whole Black Friday period, which is just awesome. That's you know? insane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's incredible. Um, so yeah, that's that's the the long and short of the 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 message. You know, it's it's there's there's a lot that can be done with this on-site visitor identity. Um, you know, we mostly focus on email. We also have some products that feed audiences into Meta because of the shortcoming of the retargeting pixel now. Um, 
you know, they're blocked. We're not because we don't have an app in the Apple App Store. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Just okay. make sure everybody knows <laughs> at the very least that these possibilities exist for them. Yeah, absolutely. Great overview. Now, obviously, we are exactly in this time scheme. Black Friday, there's still a little bit of time. Um, I think a lot of merchants are already very late to the table when it comes to their marketing uh, preparation for Black Friday. Now, if we want to collect more email addresses, your system obviously is a complete new way on how to find email addresses where you actually otherwise wouldn't have to use a form, for instance. And forms have, I don't know, 2%, 3% sign up rate if you're on, on a good day. I think, that's right. that's, I think that on a homepage, that's a pretty good average. You know, if you're the best in the world at it and it's like way down the funnel, then you're going to get higher than that. But it's 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 no more than single digit you know, collection rate, like mid single right. digit doesn't get above. How would how would you go about warming up um these new acquired email addresses to really get them into the so, funnel? But so this is an interesting this is hard to get your head around a little bit. These emails have very high positive engagement but they have negative engagement that's like a bit too high to just send to these emails alone. The way that one cold emails in consumer, in, in e-commerce or whatever, you can't just like start a company, buy a list and blast to it. That doesn't work. You know what I mean? It just, oh, okay. for whoever's tried that, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. It just causes endless problems. Um, email is a game that is built on reputation. If you establish an email program and you're regularly mailing to a list, it cleans itself to the point where the engagement of that list or your 30 day active openers is like very high. You mm -hmm. can sprinkle in this type of email that has very high and uh, very high positive and slightly high negative engagement at a rate where it's like, you know, a few percentage of the overall flow per day. And it just works beautifully because the emails are inexpensive. Now, these people are just going to start getting newsletters. But what we've learned over the last four years is that works. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like straight. You're like, well, well, why, you know, we had been telling people till about a year ago to send a welcome series. that says, thanks for stopping by the site. Take them through a three part welcome series, then put them in your newsletter. We actually found that everything performs better and the conversion rate is higher when you just start mixing them into a newsletter, <laughs> which is odd. Um, but I'm just a numbers guy. So I'm going to go with what, with what works. Um, but that works. And you know, what I tell myself is it's probably just brand impressions, right? Like it, in a weird way, email is, you know, initially maybe not as much about what it says but just the fact that you know you're you're sort of warming people up with the same compelling content that the the rest of your newsletter is getting you know something like that mm -hmm. what's your take on um warming up to people going into black friday when would you start a campaign when would you send out the first of notifications to make people aware that black so, friday is around the corner so if this is not to do with our product, right? I, with emails we're giving you, I would send to them as soon as possible. As it pertains not with our product, um, it's a good question. I think about, I think, you know, I kind of treat the internet as though people's attention and their memories are incredibly short. It's almost like longer than a week in internet time, in my opinion, is like, I, I have no, when I say I have no idea what I browsed or saw last Thursday, I'm not kidding. I don't know what I was looking at. <laughs> you know, like I get it gun to my head in, in I'm 42, 43, maybe I'm losing some, some short and medium term memory or whatever it's called, but like. I have no idea what I was doing last Friday on my computer or Thursday. So I think you can start, 
you know, warming them up a little bit a week in advance or whatever. But in my opinion, if you're talking about Black Friday, two weeks before Black Friday, that's an eternity. That's like a, that's light years from Black Friday. I think you probably even get away with a few days, you know, telling mm -hmm. them something's coming up a few days in advance. Okay. <laughs> that's one man's opinion, right? And by the way, I'll qualify by saying I'm not actually in the game. I'm like a guy who's a vendor to these people. So exactly. Yeah, cool. Now with a fast list grow, um, there might be some risks also involved. It means like list cleaning, making sure that everything uh, yeah. gets delivered. How do you deal with that? So generally speaking, we, we, we usually only sell that product to somebody who's got over 3 million of uh, sales per, per year going through their store. The bigger you are, the better. The Dr. Squatch example is like a great one. There is usually a magic balance between the amount of traffic they have that we can turn into emails, the amount of emails they've collected over the years that can sort of take this amount of traffic we're giving them. And we also never want to give somebody more than like 2% per day on average of what's going mm -hmm. out. So we have a throttle that we can... There's several different ways to throttle what's coming in. You could, for instance, only send emails to the brand after they've seen two different pages, which cuts the volume by three quarters, right? Or you could say, I'm only going to give this brand 500 per day, for instance. So um, long story short, we make sure that it's not going to, to that, that they're so far below what would overwhelm their delivery reputation that it doesn't even become part of the discussion ever. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're in in my position, it pays to be as conservative as possible. <laughs> you know, like the last thing I need is like a bunch of brands out there talking about how I blew up their deliverability. Right. It's it's it would literally destroy everything I'm doing right now. So yeah, we're unbelievably Absolutely. conservative in that department. With your heck on getting anonymous. Um people the email address from them uh, how do you prevent that you basically get email addresses that you already have in your list so the, that's part of the product uh we the, we use their existing list as a suppression list so you'll never mm -hmm. get an email that you already have it che it checks clavio first before it like puts it in to okay. make sure it's not there okay now obviously clavio just had a, a a huge um, stock market event yesterday or two God days bless them. before. Congratulations. Um, yeah, I totally appreciate that I went there um, myself using Klaviyo for years. And, and Shopify, are you also working with other platforms? What's the, the tech stack that you support? So yeah, it's mainly Shopify Klaviyo just because we're fairly young and have low penetration in this market. Um, the future for us, you know, we... You know, every vendor who sells SaaS wants to go at market. Salesforce is, is the place to do it. Um, we have the integrations built out already. Big commerce, WooCommerce, we do a lot of. Um, not so much Square. They're kind of like small, you know, ish to to make our stuff work. But yeah, those other platforms, we're, we're all over. And then all the corresponding email applications that they use. Um, Iterable Braze, Blue Core, you know, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Um, we have integrations for all of them. Okay, sounds great. How does the look uh, the typical onboarding process look like? Yeah, it's 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 pretty quick. I think it's like it's a few hours of work. Um, we do most of it, but like there's things that the brand need. You know, we need Clavio permission, Shopify permissions, whatever. So mm -hmm. it's like. I think start to finish, it usually takes seven days, but it's probably only an hour of the brand's time. You know, um, it's just kind of like getting permissions, permissions and then waiting for some work to be done and then, you know, sort of approving it all and flipping it on. And that generally, again, it's like, if you just had someone's undivided attention, it would happen in a few hours, but like, that's not how onboarding works in my experience, <laughs> you know. Very true. Yeah. How does your pricing structure work? What's the pricing look like? Yeah. So we, right now we have our starter plan is 500 bucks a month. Um, and 
you know, the, the largest people are paying 20 grand or whatever per month, but they're massive. They're like, you know, several hundred billion a year brands. Um, we are creating a Shopify app that's like a $77 a month price point. So it's, you know, much more entry level, which is by design. And it's just a monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very straightforward. Kind of, kind of based on the size of your company. So like, right. you know, a couple million in revenue is like 500 bucks a month. Okay. Uh, what's your take on where this whole thing with iOS and third party cookies is going? Um, what, how will it change that? Or how will this change the landscape? Uh, Apple is going to try to make it harder to uh, do all of this stuff. Like it's fairly clear. They, they, you know, privacy to them means anonymity, which privacy can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. It doesn't mean that to Google, right? Like it doesn't mean that to me, but I think the internet works, you know, I think the next generation of, you know, two generations from now, all of this stuff that Apple's talking about and doing, I don't think anyone's going to care about it at all because we will have all grown up in this world where, you know, of the four main tech vendors, only one of them cared about this and everybody else has been tracking us since we were in the womb. So like, who, who gives a shit, right? But um, Apple still has, they have a lot of traffic and this iPhone thing is like real. It's like they have 60% market share in the US or something and they're going to keep making it harder for everybody to do all this stuff so it's exciting for me <laughs> you know the problem's going to keep getting bigger so um so i think there's I'm always so, I'm, here, I'm here to solve it <laughs> exactly there's always bright people to find a solution to to these problems and um what i'm saying for now about two years since ios came out is that at some point we will see a ad platform coming out from Apple. Oh, that is 100% <laughs> so I'm where they're wondering, going I'm wondering that it takes so long, but that's my prediction for the last yeah. two years. Let's see where it ends. Okay, cool. Before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with the listeners that we haven't covered yet? No, I think we touched it all. I just want everybody to know that that is a thing that is happening. <laughs> you know, like this thing is happening and uh, you can do something about it. So that's the major message. Okay. One thing that I want to touch on is the billion dollar challenge that you um, sort of chronicling. So what's that about? You know, <laughs> about a year ago, I thought businesses have these interesting trajectories that went from this is like going to be a really good lifestyle business to like this thing could be a unicorn. And I had seen people doing this work in public content creation and I thought that it had a very unique way. It's like on the simplest level, it's like anyone can build anything that you have and in one second, basically now, probably faster, right? But maybe not one second, but it's getting easier to build whatever you you have and you're selling. And, um, you know, brand and trust are synonymous in my opinion and like the only thing you know it's like the 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 biggest differentiator you can have is is this brand these days and it's like okay when you're nobody how what's the quickest way to create a brand and somebody had said this and i agree it's like well people are on social media platforms to connect to people not companies right so i was like i think i'm going to try to just make a docu-series chronicling my life as I undergo this transformation from a six person lifestyle business to someone who's trying to like aggressively scale unicorn. And it, you know, people, maybe they're blowing smoke up my ass. I don't know, but like, it's, it's a really well done. There's 10, 10 minute episodes and 10 more 10 minute episodes are going to be launched starting in three weeks from now weekly. And it's just about what it's like being in the middle of this madness. You know, it's like me and my life trying to, you know, will this thing forward uh, in all of the nonsense that <laughs> that comes from it, you know, and trying to juggle everything everybody's trying to juggle in this position. So that's what it's all about. Okay, Check great project. You can, you can great watch project. It. Yeah, if you go to my LinkedIn page, Retention Adam, it's in a featured post, like the whole playlist of the episodes that, is, that has happened so far. And, also on my YouTube page, but I don't have any 
I'm putting all my content creation into LinkedIn right now. It's so like I don't have an audience there really. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a great story. Um, I wish I have done that. I mean, I'm in business for as an entrepreneur for more than 20 years and it makes for good stories. But on the other hand, also it gives for good lessons for people who want to follow in your footsteps. So well, well done on that idea. That was my cool. hope. Cool. Where can people find out more about you guys? Uh, retention.com. Pretty good domain. Can't miss that. That is a good domain. <laughs> I will. I will. Put it in the show notes for the people who can't spell. Thanks so much Great. for the time today. I really enjoyed the chat and I hope a lot of people will come over and follow you on your story and check out retention.com. Thanks for your time, Adam. Cool. Thank you.